Pfizer taking another step in the fight against COVID and asking the FDA to authorize booster shots for all Americans over the age of 18 years. Joining us right now with more on this is Dr. Kavita Patel. She's a fellow at the Brookings Institution and former White House health policy director. She's also both an NBC and an MSNBC medical contributor. And, and Dr. Patel, this is really interesting because this was the one area where there was a bit of a dust up between the scientists who were advising both the FDA and the CDC as to whether or not all Americans should get this shot. At the time, they said no because there wasn't a, enough data. What, what's new now? Yeah, what's new, Becky, is 10,000 randomized controlled trial patients that Pfizer initiated to really deliver on additional data as requested by the FDA and the advisory committees, and also pressure, I think, from the international public to demonstrate that boosters are necessary six months after a second dose, and they come through, the, it, the data did. 10,000 patients, average age of 53 years, demonstrated that a third shot at, at, on an average of six months after the second dose raises that efficacy, Becky, to about 95%. So pretty much what you would experience after full immunity from that first and second dose, which is incredible. This on top of the evidence that breakthrough infections can lead, especially in certain adults, not just high risk adults, but even people under the age of 50, that these can lead to hospitalizations. And that's a significant marker that I think should put to rest this debate. I think everyone does need a booster after six months from their second dose, at least. You know, there there were questions about this before, but the the real world studies that we've seen play out in places like Israel, where they moved ahead very quickly with third and even fourth right. booster shots. Um, what what was different about what we were seeing in Israel with some of that data? Was it not as convincing as what the study shows? Yeah, it's a great point. I think a couple of points that came up, because the Israeli data, by the way, Becky, still keeps coming, shows further and further evidence that uh, people who do not get boosters are at the highest risk, likely because of their waning immunity, especially in older patients. But I think what happened uh, several months ago when the FDA advisory committee met is that they felt like it was just too soon based on Israeli data, because the Israeli data was not compelling to demonstrate that the boosters were necessary to prevent hospital and death. The boosters certainly played a role in Israel in preventing what they called symptomatic or asymptomatic infection, mild or moderate, but not what people felt like was a threshold to merit recommending boosters for all. And I think combined with that, Becky, was this uh, kind of parallel narrative around myocarditis or inflammation of the heart. And I think people felt like it was enough to say boosters are okay in high risk people, but not okay for everyone in the general public. But here we are, November holiday season. Most people have been six months out from their second dose, most Americans. And so now I think it's time to resurface the conversation. I think Moderna recipients are going to be sitting for a little bit, uh, but hopefully the FDA will expand this to include Moderna recipients in this in this inclusion as well. You know, part of the questions that were raised last time around when the FDA was considering this uh, was just the idea that should Americans be getting a third shot when so many people in developing nations haven't gotten an opportunity to get their first? There was the ethics question that came into that. Does, is that still at play and, and will that create a problem? It is. I think it's still at play. I think there have been several reiterations by Pfizer, the manufacturer, as well as the Biden administration, that they have sufficient supply to, vet, to offer every adult their first shots every adult their booster shot, and now with children's shots, children's shots for all that are eligible. So I think the issue of supply is, is not one. I think the bigger question for the global supply is, is the U.S. making good on its promises for repurposing unused vaccines, getting those to global partners, and also pushing other developed countries to do the same? And I think that's the global pressure, along with some of the uh, patent disputes and some of the things going on with Moderna, adding, I think, a little bit of pressure to that global push for vaccines as well. If you get a third booster shot, how, how long does the effectiveness last? How, 95%, yeah. I would assume that drops off over time too. Yeah, that's a great question. So that's exactly where I think Pfizer, the manufacturer, as well as the real world evidence we're seeing from Israel, it, it, we're not quite where Israelis have all had that six month time period. But I think, as you mentioned, Israel has moved along with fourth boosters because they do have data that shows, again, that it's decreasing 
especially in older and high-risk populations. I think it's been controversial, however, Becky, because just measuring those efficacy titers does not take into consideration the very important memory cell function, which we right. do know is incredibly active. Moderna and Johnson & Johnson echoed that they also think memory functions play a role in this. So I do not think all Americans should be kind of signing up on their calendars for fourth boosters just yet. I think we do need to see more data for that. But third shots seem like a, a, just a no-brainer to me at this point. Dr. Patel, thank you.